Hi everyone, it's Miss Mary Ellen. Welcome back to Story Break. Today we're going to be reading stories about penguins. But first, let's sing our opening song. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. The more we sing together, 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 the more we sing together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we sing together, the happier we'll be. The more we clap together, 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 the more we clap together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we clap together, the happier we'll be. Good job, everybody. Let's do one more song today. Let's do If You're Happy and You Know It. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. What else should we do? If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. Stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. Okay, and hooray for our first book, which is called Little Penguins by Cynthia Ryland and illustrated by Christian Robinson. Little penguins. Snowflakes? Many snowflakes. Winter is coming. Mittens? Many mittens. And matching scarves. We have five little penguins here, so we need five mittens and five scarves. Socks, one for each foot. What about boots? Red ones. So, how's the snow? Deep. Deeper. Very deep. Where's Mama? On her way! <laughs> Let's go home. In the door and off, 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 off. All the mittens and scarves come off and boots. Jammies on. Warm cookies, please. And sippies. Thank you. Wrap up tight. Watch the night. Winter is here. Have you been sledding this winter? You had a little bit of snow. Okay, now I have a finger play about penguins, okay? Two little penguins sitting on the ice. 
One bowed once and one bowed twice. Waddle, little penguins, waddle away. Come back, penguins, time to play. Can you do that one with me? Okay, all you need is fingers, okay? Two little penguins sitting on the ice. One bowed once and one bowed twice. Waddle, little penguins, waddle away. Come back, penguins, time to play. Okay, and I have another story here about a penguin. Do you know where penguins live? Penguins live down where it's cold. We don't have penguins here in Randolph. And they live mostly down in the South Pole, but also sometimes in the very southern parts of South America has penguins. And this is called Lost and Found by Oliver Jeffers. And think what would you do if you saw a lost penguin? Once there was a boy who found a penguin at his door. The boy didn't know where it had come from but it began to follow him everywhere. The penguin looked sad, and the boy thought it must be lost. So the boy decided to help the penguin find its way home. He checked in at the lost and found office, but no one was missing a penguin. He asked some birds if they knew where the penguin came from, but they ignored him. Some birds are like that. The boy asked his duck, but the duck floated away. He didn't know either. That night, the boy couldn't sleep for disappointment. He wanted to help the penguin but he wasn't sure how. The next morning, he discovered that penguins come from the South Pole. But how could he get there? He ran down to the harbor and asked a big ship to take him to the South Pole. But his voice was much too small to be heard over the ship's horn. Together, the boy decided, he and the penguin would row to the South Pole. So the boy took his rowboat out and tested it for size and strength. He told stories to the penguin to help pass the time. Then they packed everything they would need and pushed the rowboat out to sea. They rowed south for many days and many nights. There was lots of time for stories and the penguin listened to every one so that the boy would always tell another. They floated through good weather and bad when the waves were as big as mountains until finally they came to the South Pole. The boy was delighted, but the penguin said nothing. Suddenly it looked sad again as the boy helped it out of the boat. Here's a sign that says, Welcome to the South Pole. The boy said goodbye and floated away. When he looked back, the penguin was still there. But it looked sadder than ever. It felt strange for the boy to be on his own. There was no point telling stories now because there was no one to listen except the wind and the waves. Instead, he just thought. And the more he thought, the more he realized that he had made a big mistake. The penguin hadn't been lost. It had just been lonely. Quickly, he turned the boat around and rowed back to the South Pole as fast as he could. Do you 
see this picture? Do you see that the penguin is in the other little, well, he's floating in an umbrella. At last he reached the pole again, but where was the penguin? The boy searched and searched, but he was nowhere to be found. Sadly, the boy set off for home. But then the boy saw something in the water ahead of him. Closer and closer he got until he could see, what do you think it is? The penguin! And he gave him a big hug. So the boy and his friend went home together, talking of wonderful things all the way. He wasn't lost, he was just lonely, he wanted a friend. Well, I have five penguins here who are friends. One, two, three, four, upside down, five perky penguins. Are you ready to count penguins with me? Five perky penguins stood on the shore. One went for a swim, and then there were, how many? Four. Four perky penguins looked out to sea. One went swimming, and then there were three. Three perky penguins. What can we do? One jumped in the water, and then there were two. Two perky penguins sat in the sun. One swam off, and then there was one. One perky penguin said, this is no fun. So he dove into the water, and then there were none. Bye-bye, penguins. Okay, my last story is called Penguin Aunt written by Marcy Colleen and illustrated by Emma Yarlett. Do you know what a penguin aunt is? What word does that sound like? It sounds like a mashup of penguin and astronaut. And we'll see what this penguin wants to do. Orville was small. Do you see where he lives? It says elephants that way, and it has a sign here that says penguin. I think he lives in a zoo. Orville was small. His friends were big. And their adventures were bigger. Look at this. It's a rhino parasailing. And here is a giraffe underwater. Orville longed for big adventures, too. One day, he announced his plans for the biggest and best adventure yet. Ta-da! Orville's big adventure to the moon. Option one, learn to fly. Option two, ladder. Option three, catapult. Option four, make an option four. And his friend said, all the way up there? Is that a good idea? But Orville, you're so small. And the moon is so far away. I can do this myself. Orville flippered out. He tried to flap, kerplop. He tried to climb, whack. He tried to catapult. Falling and landed in the reptile house. Orville was pretty sure the boa constrictor was not trying to hug him. Still, Orville kept trying. He borrowed from the zookeeper. He nicked from the trash cans. He built and built. And with a shake, shake, shake of a half-filled soda bottle, the ship was ready for liftoff. Eureka! 
It was perfect and perfectly penguin sized. With a trembling flipper salute, he took his place at the controls. Three, two, one. I can do this myself. Blast off. Whoosh. The ship zipped through the night sky, through clouds, over stars, and straight to the moon. Orville landed. His stomach felt queasy. His spaceship, his space suit felt squeezy. Now that he'd made it, what would he do? He took a small step. He hopped, did a little dance, and tripped. Tumble, bumble, boing. He somersaulted with stars cartwheeled over craters, and giggled for all the galaxy to hear. It was the biggest and best adventure yet. I'm doing it myself, he cheered. But his tiny voice was swallowed up in the starry blackness. Orville stopped. He was all alone. His stomach grew queasier. His spacesuit grew squeezier. He shivered, and a note fell out of his pocket. You're our penguinot. We know you can do this. Who do you think sent him that note? He missed his friends. So Orville closed his eyes tightly and imagined they were there. imagining constellations with a lion and an elephant and a giraffe. When he was safely back in his ship, he looked toward home. He couldn't wait to tell everyone about his big adventure. Sure, Orville's friends were big. Now the proud penguinot felt big too. He's back and it says, you're our hero, our incredible penguinot. But biggest of all, being together was out of this world. Three, two, one, it looks like they're all going to blast off. So Penguin had an adventure by himself because he wanted to be able to do things all by himself. But then he realized sometimes it's more fun with friends. Okay, friends, that's it for today. So you know what time it is. It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. It is time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, friends. Yeehaw!